Perhaps by now you may probably be wondering how the word cancer got its name. As you know, cancer is the zodiac symbol for a crab. As you know, crabs have little claws that extend out from their body. Here is a cancer of the breast. It is the most classical, typical type of infiltrating cancer. Notice there's a little claw of the crab. Notice there's a little claw. Notice there's a little claw. There's a little claw. And you can see the same thing over here. There's a little claw. Perhaps there's a little claw in which the gray gritty substance extends out into the softer fibrous tissue. This is infiltration and that's what makes cancer cancer. It infiltrates. And even microscopically you can tell I hope that cancers are tumors that are not confined within capsules. They send these little infiltrating neck nests out into the fibrous tissue. If you look at this part of the breast for comparison, I think I could convince you this is probably a normal lobule, even though it's small, part of a normal lobule. You could see some asini. You could see how there's some looser connective tissue around it. And then it's surrounded by denser connective tissue and ultimately intermixed in with a lot of fat. And there's your classic textbook normal lobule at the highest power we're allowed to go. Notice that there is something also terribly wrong with this breast. Notice you do not have normal lobular patterns here. Sure, you have epithelium like you would see perhaps uh, as part of a gland, but you can also see that this is not in a nice little cluster and it kind of infiltrates irregularly. These are all infiltrating little nests of breast cancer. All of the cancers of the breast are adenocarcinomas, let's say, because the breast is a gland. And almost all of the breast carcinomas are also what they call ductal carcinomas because most of the carcinomas, vast majority, arise from the ducts rather than the asini. Um, also, classically for most breast carcinomas, these infiltrating nests of cells, which we can see here, evoke a pretty dense fibrous tissue response. So for that reason, when you cut a breast cancer, you can often hear it because it's gritty. It's also why they give most breast cancers the name scirrus, because the word scirrus basically means fibrous, uh, but I don't know what language. This is a classical breast carcinoma. And in addition, if you would like to go up to high power to the nuclei, which all the neophytes do, you could see that uh, these infiltrating cells are not uniform. Some are much, much darker than their neighbors, and some are much, much bigger than their neighbors. This is uh, the general concepts of hyperchromasia and pleomorphism, respectively, which you see with most cancers, uh, including a breath, many or most of the breast cancers. In addition, all these little uh, pinpoint cells here out within the fibrous tissue. Here's a fibroblast, here's a fibroblast, probably here is, here is, here is. But the little round cells are just scattered nests of uh, lymphocytes because like most tumors, the body wants to uh, fight it with its own immune system, i.e. lymphocytes. So generally speaking, the more lymphocytes which cuff or battle or surround a tumor uh, is often associated with a better prognosis than when these tumor cells just go out invading and there's no little soldiers out here to fight them. Thank you very much.